Hi, I'm Jack Buffington for RobotBrigade.com. This video is going to be about blobs and uh, how to find them within an image uh, or video. And uh, what a blob is, is any region of pixels that you might find a particular interest in, whether it is by color, by texture, by uh, orientation of the lines seen in the image. Uh, as long as you can separate that into this is of that type or this is not of that type, then this is the process that you go to uh, use to create statistics about uh, that region. So let's go over to my computer and take a look at what is going on there. So blobs! For the purposes of this video, I am going to call a blob something that has pixels that are connected through an edge, but not through a corner. So everything in this region right here on the left would become one blob. But over here on the right, uh, this would become five different blobs. And in my example, I am using uh, uh, imagery that I'm determining what is part of a blob based on a um, range of colors that I'm looking for. And in the past, I have found that it is much better to convert an image from RGB or red, green, blue color space over to HSV, which is hue, saturation, and value. Um, and if you're low on uh, uh, CPU cycles, uh, you can convert to the HSL color space, which is slightly uh, faster. Uh, so uh, hue is basically, without getting into how you compute it, if you have your color wheel here, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, red, like that. that. This is saying what angle it is on that color wheel. Um, and then uh, saturation is how vivid that color is. Is it more like gray or is it like a very bright red or green or yellow or something like that? Um, and if I remember correctly on the calculation, the saturation was calculated as uh, the difference between the maximum and minimum um, RGB values. So uh, if red was 255 and blue was zero, then that would be a fully saturated color. But if red was 128 and blue was 126 and green was 127, you'd only have a, a saturation of two, um, if I'm recalling correctly how you calculate that. Uh, value is found by multiplying red, green, and blue by some constants that approximate how bright our eyes perceive those colors to be. Uh, if you're going for the computational speed up of going into HSL color space, then you're just simply selecting the maximum value of the red, green, and blue. So let's look at these. These are my pixels uh, of an image. It's, uh, let's call it a, ball and a dog. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, we're going to go through the process of how this algorithm goes about finding uh, where the blobs are and identifying them. Um, the neat thing about this algorithm is that it um, has a very low memory footprint. Uh, there are some algorithms out there that um, you know, you have to have a whole frame buffer in memory and then search through it using, uh, you know, flood fill or whatnot. Uh, this one, you only have one pixel that needs to be in memory and then you're keeping statistics in a few uh, objects uh, to help you keep track of what's going on. Uh, so we'll just start here. The way it, it works is it just starts at the top of the image and I don't know if you're flipped or not, um, it scans across and then it goes to the next line, it goes to the next line, it goes to the next line, and it individually examines each pixel. Uh, in uh, the example that I will show in my next video, I convert the whole image all at once because I'm doing it in OpenCV. Uh, but 
you could do the color space conversion as part of uh, the process of examining, examining each pixel. Um, so we start here and here I have found, okay, here are two contiguous pixels that are gray and gray are pixels that match the criteria that I'm looking for, whether it's a color or texture, whatever. Uh, and I keep going and I do this all the way across a row until I get to the end of the row. And if at the end of the row, um, I'm still uh, kind of working on uh, a, a region, then I call that region done. Um, and I'll get to what I'm calling these regions in, in just a moment. Now I'm going to look at these again, and I'm going to say, okay, here is my first group. Um, actually, I might as well just tell you right now. This I'm calling these line matches. And does this line match overlap with something on the previous line? Well, if this is the first line, the answer is no. And so we go ahead and we create a blob out of each, uh, each line match. So I'm uh, coloring them red, green, and blue here. Now I'll start in on the second line. Okay, found there, there, there. All right, and I do the same thing again. Do I overlap with something on the previous line? So I only need to keep statistics about two lines, uh, which, you know, the number of matches that you're going to find in an, in an image are pretty low. Uh, so here I say, okay, yep, that overlapped with red. Here this overlapped with green, and this one, oh, it overlaps with blue. So far, so good. Now uh, we'll go ahead and do the next line. We found two. And once again, this is an easy overlap with red. And for this one, I can see, okay, there's an overlap here. So I'm, if I had these blobs, red being one, green being two, and blue being three, then I'd say, okay, it doesn't overlap with red. Oh, it does overlap with green. So we add this to the green blob. But then I keep checking and I say, oh, actually it overlapped with blue as well. Um, but we can't have something be part of two blobs. So what we end up doing is we take all of the statistics of the blue blob and add them into the green blob and make that one big blob. So let's look at the uh, classes that I'm using to create my objects that uh, store all the data about this. The first is a line match, and I'm keeping statistics about the minimum and x, uh, maximum x uh, coordinates. So these are where it started and stopped seeing pixels that matched. I'm keeping the x weight, and I'll get into what... Uh, what that's for later, but what it is is the sum of every x coordinate uh, within that line match. So if I had pixel 10 and pixel 11, uh, then the x weight would be 21. Is active is used uh, when determining whether uh, this line match has been uh, maybe. Uh, I forget exactly how I have that, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Um, uh, but I am using that somewhere in my code, and I will be posting that uh, with the next video. And which blob is used when uh, I am seeing if there's an overlap, then it tells me which blob I need to add that line match into. All right, and then finally, I have a blob class. I'm keeping min and max x, min and max y x weight, the y weight, which is the sum of all of the y coordinates uh, for every pixel. So if I have here, 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 and here, I'm adding four y values into the, the y weight. Then I have the centroids, and I'll get to how those uh, are calculated in just a moment, but the, the key aspect about the centroid is, is that it is not the center of the bounding box. It'll be close to the center of the bounding box usually, but um, the, the centroid is if, if, I, if I took a region and let's say I cut this out of a piece of wood or something, it'd be the point that I could take and balance it perfectly. Um, so if it's teardrop shaped or something, it's gonna be much more up towards the top uh, than 
directly in the center of it. The pixel count is just a count of how many pixels are in that blob. And uh, the blob ID is just which number that blob is. Uh, it's used because it's a little easier to keep track of things when I'm uh, deleting out a blob and then I have to re-index things. Uh, I don't have to do as much work if I just have a blob ID in there. Uh, so to calculate your centroids, you're just simply taking your X weight and dividing it by the pixel count and taking the Y weight and doing the exact same thing. Um, so that gives you the uh, arithmetic mean of where all of the weight in the uh, blob is. One thing I didn't say so far was how the conversion to hue saturation value helps you in finding a blob. And so I'd like to go back and, and touch on that. What you can do is for every pixel, after you convert it into hue saturation value, you can do what is called a window compare. So if this is my range of values from zero up to 255, uh, I might say I want uh, pixels that have a hue in this range and a saturation in this range and a value of this. Um, so that's, that's all you have to do, uh, but it is pretty immune to, uh, and then the reason that I like to go to hue saturation value is that it's immune uh, to a larger extent to lighting changes. Now, it's not immune to if I were to pass from a place where we've got a very cool light to a warm light, uh, that, that could be problematic. But overall, if it's just shadowing, it tends to do okay. Um, and I'm going to show you a video here now that uh, this shows something I did about a decade ago. Uh, it was an early video that I shot of the process. And I'm bringing this piece of paper that I've, uh, uh, I painted this paper with gouache paint, which is very saturated. Uh, it has very saturated colors. Uh, and I'm bringing it in and out of the light and, um, and showing uh, my blob finder in a very graphical way. Um, so this is running 10 years ago in real time on a uh, fairly old laptop at the time, if I recall correctly. Um, so, uh, this isn't necessarily a, uh, computationally intense thing to do, um, though <laughs> the way that I implemented it this time was in Python, which is a incredibly slow language. Uh, so that is not real time when I do it in Python on a modern computer, but, uh, uh, I wrote this other thing in C sharp. And so... Um, C sharp is plenty fast because it's a nice compiled language. And so that is it for blobs. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you want to get your fingers on actual code, take a look at the next video that I produce in a day or two here. And um, I will have a link to that code in that video. So for robotbrigade.com, I'm Jack Buffington. Yeah.